comic books. Man sport. The comic books have been with me since I was seven years old. Uh, they're the most fantastic form, media form that I know. They're, you know, it's not moving, but it's moving because someone drew it that way. Sequential art with words. In this way, I like to look at them because regardless of how good or bad they are, I'm engaged in this. I get to be a bit of an editor, a bit of a, uh, of a director. I get to freeze for it. If I don't want to move my eyes from left to right, if I want to linger on a picture, I can linger and then I move on to the next one. It's, it's great. It's fantastic. It's like, I think been underrated probably because of too many superheroes and stuff. It's a great way to tell a story. Since I was a kid, it got me first because of the content, science fiction, superheroes, Spider-Man. You know, I was, I was a kid, little kid in the mid sixties. So I was reading the Marvel stuff and the DC stuff as it came out. So Spider-Man, the Hulk, fantastic four, all that Marvel. So the X-Men, they were all pretty much brand new. You know, only by a couple of years. And it really got me. You know, it really got more than TV or more than anything. And until music, that that was the thing that had to strangle hold on me. And I still I still like the old ones better than new ones, although there's plenty of great new ones. I like the old ones better, one because they hit me when I was a kid and it's hard to shake that stuff, but other because they're so simple and they're not as target marketed as new ones are. They're written by these guys who kind of knew who was reading them, but I don't think they really understood what the age group was. I don't think they really understood. So they wrote them pretty broad. And most of the time, they come off unintentionally uh, absurd. Wildly so. Like, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. But it's cool. You know, you read between the lines. You, In the simpler storytelling, the more you put your own mind into it. And you make up stuff about it. This is what that meant. This is what this meant, even if it didn't. Much more than movies, uh, to me, comic books had an effect on me in the way I wrote songs later on. Not that I was writing songs about Spider-Man or whatever, but it was writing ambiguous enough so the listener could fill in the gap the way a reader would fill in the gap of a, of a comic book. They're fantastic. And I never got tired of them. I still haven't got tired of them. I still read new comic books all the time. Even cooler is that I get like a, a amazing mega payback from a guy named Grant Morrison, one of the finest comic book writers of all time. He included a character in his when he on his run of X-Men in the 90s and he named that character Negasonic Teenage Warhead, which is a Monster Magnet song, a, a title that I wrote. Flash forward, now there's a movie, Deadpool. And that character, Negasonic T Teenage Warhead, is now walking around like 90 feet tall in IMAXs. And it's like, I wrote that title. It's like comic book heaven for me. You know, it's my connection. Really, really awesome. Anyway, when I was talking about the 60s comic books, I mean, some of this stuff is just so beautifully done, like this Shield. Jim Steranko did this cover. I won't even bother opening up the, the inside because it would just be too much for your brain to contain. Total psychedelic 1968 comic. I mean, how badass is that? Look at that thing. You know, what else do you want? He's some badass super spy with an eye patch with a giant gun and there's op, -op, op art patterns and inside he, he actually gets girls. Love it. The Creeper. The Creeper. What else do you want? Just look at it. So he, this thing was drawn by Steve Ditko, one of the masters of comic book art. The guy is like totally out of his mind. Fantastic. Um, he was really famous for doing stuff with Doctor Strange that looked like a, some sort of illustrated version of a Salvador Dali painting. Everything's dripping. It's blobbing off. Um, it really, really cool comic. Didn't last long. Didn't last long enough. Captain America, this one's from 1968, drawn by Jack Kirby, written by Stan Lee. One of my favorite comics ever because it's just 
one of these things where the hero himself, Captain America, is so bummed out. <laughs> he's completely bummed out. Poor Cap, you know? He, he's a guy that fought in World War II, and then he was frozen in ice, and he woke up in the 60s. So he's got this whole, you know, 1940s, 1930s, 40s mentality, and now it's to deal with the, the world that's gone insane in the 1960s. Protests, hippies, Vietnam War, the whole thing. The whole world's gone insane. And poor Cap is like walking around there with a crew cut. This particular issue is him almost having a nervous breakdown due to a, a, some help from a bad guy called uh, Dr. Faust. It features his Cap's worst nightmares where he has these, these kind of psychedelic, almost psychedelic type uh, fever dream nightmares. In this case, his worst one, which is fighting the Nazis in World War II. The way Kirby draws the Nazis is way, way over the top. It's Frankensteinian. It's like uber Nazi, almost like horror movie Nazi. And Kirby really put a lot into his Nazis. Kirby was a, a Jew from, uh, from Manhattan, from the Lower East Side. Grew up in the Great Depression, fought in World War II, actually fought the Nazis, went back started his life over again, continuing his comic book career. And, but no matter what he did, he never got far away from, from that big fight. And he brought these crazy Nazis into focus in all his work. And I think that's, well, number one, they were the best bad guys in the world because, you know, they were just so stylish. But other two, because he still had that beef going on. It's really interesting to, to, to see Kirby's depiction of bad guys. They always, it always comes down to Hitler. This is a cool comic, man. Here's a Green Lantern from, I think, 67, 68. And it's a good comic. It's not the best comic in the world, but it's got the best title I've ever seen on the thing. Dry Up and Die. Enemy Ace. Enemy Ace was a badass comic about a, a World War II, a World War I pilot. He flew those biplanes, you know, like the two-wing planes. Really, really well drawn by Joe Kubert. And uh, it's just fantastic. It's like airplanes and bullets and, well, what else do you want? The Spectre, also I think about 67 or 68. Spectre was a cool comic. He was a, originally a policeman who was shot. And he was, you know, on his way to the great hereafter. But somehow God, they don't, they don't, they don't really tell you it's God, but it's God. God comes to him and says, you know, I have trouble myself with vengeful wrath in the 20th century, but I need someone to go out there and just pretty much deliver the kind of wrath that some bad guys deserve, which is not just a, you'll go to hell later. You're going to go to hell right now, a living hell. So you're the guy that's going to go out and meet out that divine justice, bloody justice as the specter. And it got pretty bloody. I mean, you know, he would, the specter would go out and make bad guys pay for the crime making it like apropos of the crime. If guys went out and stole a bunch of lumber, the specter would come and turn them into lumber himself and then chop them up with a chainsaw. This is an Aquaman cover from 67, 68. And it was drawn by Nick Cardi. That's why I really like it. Just because the cover is so beautiful. I mean, that's pretty badass. It's pretty grand. Okay. The Phantom Stranger. Now, the Phantom Stranger was another guy who was kind of religious and weird, weirdness. He was kind of, I think he was originally the Wandering Jew. If anybody knows the story of the Wandering Jew, I'm not going to explain it to you now. But it's this guy who never dies and he just wanders around and he pretty much calls out bad guys when he can in history. Um, except now, of course, it's DC Comics version, so he's got a fancy hat and a cape. In this particular issue, is one of my favorite comics ever because it, it, it deals with hippies in 67. You've never seen anything as funny as your life as how comic books dealt with the counterculture. They never got it right. Their version of it was almost like a TV version of like, wow, you kids are crazy, you know? You know, everybody's got their stereotypical side in it. Love beats, the speech, hey man, like what's happening, man? And of course, they always meet somebody from the older generation who's completely and totally evil. Which is right, by the way. This one's great. It's got it all. Drowned people coming back from the dead. Hippies running up and down sand dunes. I think there might be a couple dune buggies in there. Uh, as well as plenty of death. So, have fun.
I'm done. 